What's going on out there? Welcome to another edition of the Movie Fans Horror Review. I'm your host, the Movie Fan, and we'll be honest with you guys. This is probably going to be a kind of quick, rushed uh, episode of the Movie Fans Horror Review. Uh, Movie Fan went uh, swimming uh, today and yesterday. And, uh, you know, this is why phantoms don't typically go swimming because, especially out in you know, public, underneath the hot sun, because I I'm just sunburnt beyond recognition. Like, literally, the legs, I got, I got blisters on my upper arm. It's horrible. I mean, you never seen, you know, Winslow Leach, you know, going out there swimming in the beach. And bonus points to whoever got the reference right there. So, anyways, yes. We're here, but you almost soldiered through. Cause this is what I do for you guys. This is, you know, but in soldiering through, I mean, I'm gonna bitch a lot and then like give you a kind of half-assed rushed uh, episode. So yes, uh, but it's gonna be back right here and let's get right down to it. Now we do have two reviews for you tonight. We got, uh, shit, The Crazies, uh, the, the remake, 2010. And then we got the original, The Haunting. So, boom. Kind of different, you know, slices of pie there. So we're going to throw them your way. So uh, yeah, let's say we get into this now. Uh, we, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, literally wincing underneath there. Every movement is just it's hell. All right. The question of the week last week was, what was your top three favorite uh, Satan slash demon, you know, hell type movies? You know, and oh uh, yeah, we actually got quite a few uh, responses. Boom, four. So, shit, yeah, love it. All right, uh, up first we got a Joker. I'm going to start calling you Joker if you're cool with that. Like, the, the last week I talked about how, like, I didn't know how to pronounce his name, and I asked him, you know, and of course he sent me, like, how to pronounce it. It was, like, almost ten syllables. I, I'm not going to lie. Like, I would just butcher it even more now. Even with the, like, pronunciation spelled out for me, that's ten syllables, almost. It, it may have been nine, but either way, that's still... So, Joker, if you don't mind, I'm going to call you Joker. So, if it does offend you, you know, hit me up, let me know. Uh, but Joker went ahead and threw out that his top three consists of, at number three, and it was my number one, uh, The Omen. Because, fuck it, it's a classic. Uh, at number two, Wishmaster. You know, I've, also, I've only seen uh, parts of this on HBO. Like, when it came out, I was in junior high, and I'll be honest with you, like, I would stay up late. This is how I've actually seen a lot of horror movies in my time. Is you're waiting for the dirty stuff to come on Cinemax. You know? And that usually comes on around 10, 11-ish. And they usually throw in... Like, they don't have like a blockbuster leading into, like, softcore. It's, it's rare if they do. But, you know, you surf around. Now, HBO, they're not really known for the softcore. Like, they do the real sex and something else. And I'm wrong. There's nothing wrong with the real sex. I, I enjoy the real sex. But, you know... When you're a teenage boy, you just want to see, like, Emmanuel in space or Passion Cove or whatever the fuck they had going on back then. But they had, uh, this is where I, was, you know, I caught Wishmaster once. It was like, I think it was on HBO. So I caught, like, the first half hour of it and then switched over to uh, masturbate, you know, to uh, some sort of, you know, beach bunny patrol cops in Miami or, you know, some shit like that. So, yeah, uh, Wishmaster was his number two. And his number one was uh, Hellbound, Hellraiser 2. And, uh, yeah, it's actually my favorite Hellraiser movie. Uh, yeah, I, I love their uh, concept of hell. Like, if I, I wouldn't say if I was going to make, you know, if I was to write out my description of what I think a hell should be like, you know, it wouldn't be it, but it was a very unique version. And right now, as right now on screen, it's my favorite version of hell. So, yes, boom, that was the Joker. Uh, up next, we had Get Up and Kill. My boy right there. Oh, God damn. <laughs> Alright, at number three, we had uh, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, which was uh, my number two. Uh, love that movie. Apparently he did too. Uh, the Exorcist 3, damn good. Mentioned it last week. And then uh, he threw out uh, Evil Dead. So yes, boom, that was his. Uh, then we had a new viewer, actually. I never, uh, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know who this person was, but, you know, she hit me up on it. Uh, Miss Xena. You know, thank you for watching. And she hit me up with her top three. Uh, Demons. And this is where the horror poser is going to come out in me. And it's going to come out worse on the next person I'm going to talk about. Uh, I have never seen Demons at all. I know. Uh, it's one of those big ones, too. It's a biggie. I should have already seen it. I haven't. I know the 
the phantom uh, poser mask is coming off, and I am, you know, seen for the sham that I really am. But yeah, just I have not seen it. Uh, her number two was the Evil Dead, and uh, number one it was uh, Record Two. And then she asked me if I seen it, and I have I have not seen it. I want to because I enjoyed Record. Thought it was a damn good movie. I would like to see part two. You know, see how you know the story progresses. So yeah, that was hers. And then uh, Gorshak uh, Thirteen throughout. Uh, and I, I'll be honest, I hadn't seen any of these. Uh, and once again, I mean, I've heard of them. They're you know classics. They're you know within the circle of you know the horror community. These are considered you know at least great movies to see. You know, you should have already seen them, and I just haven't. Uh, Night of the Demons was his number three. Uh, number two, he had Demons Two. And then at number one, House of the Devil. I hadn't even heard of the House of the Devil. So, but it does sound interesting. So, yeah. So, there you go. I want to thank every single person out there who, uh, you know, hit me up with these responses. Thank you very much. Uh, this week, I'm going to go, uh, I figured top three. I've been doing these top threes lately. When I first started the show, I started just doing like a question. It was just like, what's your favorite, you know, this or favorite that. And then, like I said, the reason I did top threes was because, you know, usually when I'm talking to people, you know, outside the lair, I usually do top threes. I'm just like, what's your top three, you know, such and such. Uh, so I went back and did some of the other questions, you know, like, you know, revamped them and turned them into top threes. So this was one that I asked before, but we're going to turn it into a top three now. Uh, what are your top three uh, remakes? Because since we got two movies that we're reviewing tonight that either have been remade or are a remake, that is the question, is what are your top three favorite horror remakes so boom there it is now as for myself uh man i'm not a lot i'm having trouble coming up with my, my third one what i'm thinking i top of my head i'm gonna say dawn of the dead the, the you know the re obviously remake uh just because like literally i i, I kind of frown upon most remakes but there are some good ones out there and you know, I think the remake to Halloween was pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. Thought it was, you know, I'm actually, you know, wasn't just pretty good. It was actually pretty awesome. I thought Rob Zombie did a really good job with it. However, I thought Dawn of the Dead was just uh, awesome. I mean, we did 28 Days Later, which had the first time we seen infected, not zombies, you assholes, infected, running, and it was terrifying. So then you're like, you know what, fuck it. Let's make these zombies super fast. Now, even though we've seen some zombies run before, and eh, fuck those other movies. Because Dawn Dead. So I'm going to say Dawn Dead be my number three. My number two would be The Ring. Which is a remake of Ringu. You know, Japanese. Uh, just love it. I've done a review. You guys, you know, if you've seen the review, you know how much I love that movie. And my number one, if you guys remember back when we did this question, it was The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. So, boom. There it is. So, uh, yeah, you want to do your top three? You know, hit me up. You know, several ways to do it. You can do the video response if you want. I, I don't, you know, I'm not forcing that upon anybody. But, you know, if you want to drop a video response, hey, go for it. No problem. Uh, other ways is, you know, just hit me down below. Oh, just leave the comment. Just right there. Boom. Yeah, you can just leave it down there. Uh, all my uh, Phantom friends over on Facebook, you can hit me up there. And uh, finally, uh, moviefandom7 at gmail.com. So, you know, there you go. Multiple ways you can hit me up with this. So, uh, yeah. Now, I'm not going to lie. Once again, I'm in some pain. And I had a, a list of news. I, I, I cut almost all of it out. Like, I just, you know, because it wasn't really news. Like, this has just been our shitty week. Uh, we're getting a lot of shitty weeks. I'm, I'm, not, I'm getting kind of fed up with this. But uh, the only thing I really saw that I even kind of cared about, and I'm bringing it to you, is uh, I guess finally, after being stuck in movie purgatory, uh, Jurassic Park 4 is going to get made, finally. Uh, you know, you can debate if it's a horror movie or not. I don't really give a shit. Fuck it. My show. So, uh, Jurassic Park 4 is getting made. They got writers uh, on board. It's going to be, uh, the two dudes that did, uh, I can't believe I didn't write this down. I, I, I know I'm blank. Oh, yeah, uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Which I enjoyed Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I thought it was, a, you know, a really good movie. And I believe the article even said something like, you know, if they get two guys that can try to re or resurrect a uh, franchise, these would be two to do it. And, like, I agree, because I definitely like Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, so yeah, Jurassic Park 4 is a go. Steven Spielberg uh, will not direct it. I guess there, uh, there's a, at one point there was talks that he would, but now it's official he's not. So, uh, but he is going to produce it. So, and yeah, I like Spielberg's movies, but he's never a draw for me. Like I can go either way. Like I just, you know, I, I, he's talented, but to me I'm just not like, oh wait, Spielberg got a new movie out? Well shit, let's go. No, no, I don't care. To me, Jurassic Park 4 is more of a draw to me than a Steven Spielberg movie. So that's just me personally. Don't attack me. I'm, I got sunburned, so don't, you know. 
Uh, yes, and uh, the answer, I had a question the other day. Uh, Alicia asked, uh, have I seen The Omen Part 3? Because I did The Omen last week. And uh, I have not, actually. I stopped after Part 2. And the reason I did was, all right, uh, you know, when I saw, I seen The Omen when I was, uh, you know, I was a kid. And I loved it then. I just thought it was brilliant. Got, you know, cause I, I, I tend to gravitate toward those dark side type movies, you know. And uh, so I loved The Omen, seen it, you know, so many times. And I knew there were sequels to it. I knew, I, I want to say there's four all together, or three sequels, sorry, there's four Omen movies all together, but three sequels. Uh, yeah, I could be wrong, I don't, I don't want to be. Uh, anyways, yeah, I uh, just never got around to watching them. It, I don't know, I feel like that was just perfect by itself. Uh, whenever I uh, finally did get around to watching part two, I found it in the, on the $7 rack, not $5 bin, $7 rack. Uh, I was like, you know what, let me give it a shot. First time I watched it, I fucking hated it. Uh, Damien, the Omen 2. I thought it was just a piece of shit. I was like, wow, this is a piece of shit. Uh, I compared it to like The Exorcist 2. That's how, you know, The Heretic, you know. Uh, even called it like The Omen, The Heretic, you know, because I was just being a dick. However, like two years later, I watched it again. And I was like, you know what? It's not that bad. And it seems like the more I watch it now, the more, anyway, it, it is a really good movie. Now, is it as good as The Omen? Dude, not even fucking close. But for what it is, it ain't bad. I mean, it does have some memorable scenes to it. But I feel like I was kind of burnt on part two initially. And even though it did turn out to be a really decent one, I have no desire to see three, four, the remake, because I'm sorry, the old man's just where it's at for me. So maybe later down the road I'll, I'll stumble across it, but you know, until then, nah. All right, let's get to the reviews. That's how quick I'm running tonight. Look at, boom, we're at the reviews already. I don't know what time we're at, but you know, fuck it. Uh, okay, at first we got uh, from 2010, the crazies, where a plane crashes with this chemical, and the town folks go, you guessed it, crazy. All right, I have seen the original so long ago that I don't remember any of it. Like, I was literally <laughs> mini fan. I was a baby fan, probably. I don't know. It, it was a long I just don't remember it. But I always remember, like, I like it. Like, I'm just like, ah, I like it. George Romero, I love it. You know, whatever. This is a movie that everybody kept saying, Phantom, you gotta watch it. Phantom. And it was getting hyped up. Now, just so you don't think that's the reason I don't like this movie, I'm gonna throw another example at you. There's another movie I watched recently that was hyped up, beyond recognition, by, you know, some of the wrong people, some of the right people. I want them the ones who... I do now trust with their horror movie, you know, recommendations. Uh, Insidious, you know, I was really gung ho on just like slamming this thing. Uh, gave it a decent review, and then like I said, the more I thought about it, the better it got in my mind. Like it really wasn't what it stuck with you. So there's a, there's a there's an example of a movie that was just overhyped before I get into it, and it turned out to be you know a really good movie. Whereas the Crazies, I just I don't like. I think uh, it has some decent things about it. I think one thing I don't like about it is. Uh, the acting, uh, which Timothy, uh, I'm going to put your last name, Oliphant, I think, you know, he does good stuff. I mean, I, I like him from Scream 2 and just kind of followed him from there. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, one thing that kind of paints him in a negative light for me is the fact that uh, Kevin Smith mentioned on, uh, I want to say it's the third evening of Kevin Smith, or three evening of Kevin Smith, if that's the right one I'm thinking about, where, you know, the dude just like kind of smack talking with him and everything. And ever since I heard that, I don't know, I was like, that's my boy Kevin. Like, I will, you know, stand up for, you know, my favorite directors or writers, directors, whatever. And uh, so, yeah, ever since I heard that, like, I just, every time I watch a movie with Timothy Oliphant, I'm just kind of like, eh, fuck him. So, maybe that's a little bit of that. But he also had other, I mean, he had the girl from uh, Friday the 13th. She was the young girl in this movie. And it had uh, the girl from Silent Hill, that Rhonda Mitchell, Rhonda Mitchell, it don't matter, her. And they're decent actresses. I mean, you know, I'm not saying, like, they can... They're like the best in the world. They're not in my top whatever. But, you know, they're not bad. I just thought that overall everybody turned into shitty performances in this movie. Like, I just didn't. And it, it maybe was just a performance. It was also just like the script. I thought the script was just ridiculous. Like, I don't know. One scene, and I'm just going to start, once again, I'm, I'm a, myself here. So if it doesn't make sense, fuck you. Uh, there were just certain scenes that just, I don't know, just came off cheesy. Like, the scene early on when the girl, I can't think of her name right now, but anyway, she asked, she works at the doctor's office, she's presumably like a secretary or whatever, and she asked the you know, girl if she can get off early to go, because she had to take care of her grandmother, her grandmother's sick, and the girl knows that she's just going to get off to go, you know, hang out with her boyfriend and probably blow him or whatever, and 
it's just like this cheesy like, oh, you gotta stay late. Oh, tell your grandmother, you know, Scotty. And it's just like the girl where I like, she got busted. She's like, oh, I got busted. And they're like, ah, get out of here, you little scamp. I, I don't know. It's like they try to capture like this small town USA feel. But I'm sorry, that small town USA feel, it just seems like it's gone now. I don't know. I, I just can't, I can't get into that. Uh... You know, like, the doctor makes a house call, and I'm like, what doctor's fucking making a house call nowadays? No, they're in for the money. I'm sorry. <sighs> you know, direction wasn't bad. I, I won't slam the director on this one. I thought, it, you know, he did, you know, decent with it. I mean, the pacing was there. It was just the subject matter in general, and just the writing, and overall, just the feel of it. You know, I love gritty-looking movies, but there's one thing I'm getting kind of sick of is like these new Hollywood gritty movies. Like, you know, you look at Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that's a gritty fucking movie. It looks real. But even look at the remake, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and sure, it's gritty, but it's like glossy gritty. And there's a difference. And, you know, it just seems like they're all just trying to cash in. Like, let's just like, you know, fuck trying to write original material. Let's just grab some fucking remakes. Let's just grab an old script. Or we'll remake it. Based on name value alone, and we'll just make it look gritty. That's what we'll do. We'll just fucking make it look gritty. And I don't know. I'm real. I'm hating right now, but I just I don't care because I'm just not in a good mood. Uh, yeah, like I said there just wasn't much on this movie I liked. Uh, this delivery of lines, like the scene where they're in the boat and they're looking for the uh, airplane that went down. <sighs> There's a scene, and they're sitting there, and of course the whole time the guy's just nagging about this reward. And, Sheriff's like, you know, you don't shut your mouth, I'm gonna throw you in the fucking water or something like that. And the dude's was like, you want you to just shoot me like you did the other guy, because there's a guy who gets shot early in the movie. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, anyway, it's on the fucking trailer, so. Anyways, uh, yeah, and then he turns around, like he just stops, he's like, huh? Looks at him, he's like, kill the engine. And they're like, why? He's like, because we're here. Really? And sure enough, they're on top of the fucking giant, you know, airplane. The guy who, uh, I said, I don't like it, okay, I forgot it was 2010, I don't want to give too much away. I don't know. There's a scene in it where Timothy gets his, like, he gets attacked from one dude, he has his hand stabbed into the, uh, floor, and then, so, I mean, it looks pretty good, don't get me wrong, I'm drawing, don't get me wrong, the effects look pretty good in this movie. Except for the, yeah, I won't go into that. Anyways, the, yeah, boom, hand right there. And there's someone strangling from behind, and then there's a woman with a gun pointed at his, at his wife. And as he's getting closer, you know, he grabs the gun, he he pulls the knife, you know, he pulls the knife out, and he elbows the you know guy strangling him. He still has the knife in his hand. He just jabs the woman in the neck. Now these people are infected with a virus. Now presumably, you know, I mean, they, they got it from drinking the water. But beyond that, we don't know much about this virus at all. We don't know anything about it, hardly. This dude has an open cut on his hand, and he jabs the knife into this woman's throat, more blood comes out, and then instead of just like trying to yank it out, he yanks the knife through his hand again, so he's just bringing more blood from her infected neck into his fucking hand. I'm thinking to myself, like, really? Are we being serious right now? You should be in fuck. you should start coughing right now. You should start coughing have the AIDS symptoms, and then go crazy. I, I don't know. Another scene that just, you know, just I'm, I'm chalking up the bad writing is, now as I'm watching this movie, and they're trying to get away, you know, they got a little small group of survivors, they're in a car, the whole town's like on quarantine in a way, and they're trying to drive away. Now I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, granted, and I didn't realize there was going to be like helicopters watching them, but I'm like, you know, I would still stay off the main roads, because, you know, if they're going to be watching you, they're going to be watching you at a main fucking road. But they're cruising on the highway, but whatever, they get caught. And of course, they, they blow the car up. They have to start walking later. And they even say that. They're like, we've got to stay off the main road. We've got to find, like, you know, a you know, side road. But then when the car blows up and they have to walk it, they're still walking the main fucking highway. Are you kidding me? Like, cut through some fields. Like, literally, like, you don't have to walk the roads. And granted, like, there are ages, just open fields. There are some wooded areas, too. They could have got away with it. I don't know. Overall, I didn't care for this movie. That's just all I'm saying. So, I know there, and it has a lot of fans. Like, it's not, I'm, I'm a one-man guy on this one. Like, it is a, a like movie. Everybody seems to love this thing. I personally just do not. So, uh, yeah.
Boom. I, I, I need to watch the original again. I'm sure I'll just be sucking it off. It's because George Romero did a black. Like, ah, Mr. Romero. Ah, oh, you did great work. That was me putting the cock back in the pants and then zipping it up and then pushing it off. Anyway, so yeah, crazy. That's my review. Uh, up next, we got uh, from 1963, The Haunting. Now, this is the movie that I have always heard. And basically, you know, it's this guy goes to a Hill House, which already has a, you know, crazy past to it anyways. And he brings these uh, people who are, uh, I guess, more perceptive to uh, the supernatural world to conduct an experiment to see if, in fact, supernatural exists. Uh, now, this is a movie that I've always heard that was... Now, I didn't even realize that this was existed like i seen the uh, the haunting when it came out watch it to drive in and that was all right it wasn't like the greatest of what you know it wasn't horrible either i had i mean i hadn't seen it since i was in high school but you know whatever from junior high no it's high school but i didn't realize it was a remake of an original and then i found out you know about this movie and i always wanted to see this one and i did like the idea like because they it was always been called uh it's the horror movie it's the ghost movie without any ghost in it and I mean, literally, it is all it is is just noises through the whole movie. You hear noises like you know poundings and scratches and people laughing, but you never see a ghost in the entire fucking movie. Spoiler alert: it's 1963. Fuck off. Uh, so yeah, I, you know, and I was like, you know, all right, a movie that's built with suspense. I, I am more, I am on now. Like, I'm, I love my gore, you know, my gore fest. Fucking cut them up, slash them up, chainsaw them up. Rape them, kill them. I love those type of movies, but I, I do prefer some other, you know, means of entertainment. I like some suspense. I like, you know, be on the edge of my seat as I'm watching a movie. I, you know, I, I like that stuff too. So I was like, all right, I'm in. It gets started, and it's this girl, the main girl, Eleanor. Uh, you find out later, like, it's one of those things where, like, she had to take care of her sick mother. And the mother is just always beating on the wall. I think how she called her, like, you know, instead of having a bell or just call her name, she beats on the wall and she has to go check her. And then, like, this one day, I guess, like, 11 years of this, like, I mean, this girl's probably, like, in her late 20s, early 30s. So, like, her whole, like, childhood was gone and she didn't really have an outside life. She had to take care of her mother. Anyways, like, the one time she decides, like, you know what, fuck her. I'm not going to, you know, go check to what she needs. She dies. Uh, you don't find yourself there later, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so that's, like, what her thing is. But the whole movie is, like, it's her narration, her voiceover, where her, you know, her thoughts. It she just comes off very fucking whiny. Like the whole movie, she's whining. It's like she's scared to death of the house, and then she doesn't want to leave the house. She fucking she gets terrorized in her bed, and then the guys are like, "Well, we'll get you out of here." You know, first taxi will get you home. Oh no, I don't want to leave. I can't go home. I'm like, really? Don't have to go home. Go somewhere else. She didn't want to go home. That's one thing. She doesn't. She lives like in her sister's. You know bedroom or no her uh, living room but I'm like you have to go home fuck it just run off become like a prostitute or something like that because you know I don't know it's whatever you want to do you know she wasn't bad looking I mean she could probably get some money on the streets get who you do get by you know no she cries the whole time she whines that's all, that's all it was like I'm not gonna lie like the movie had certain elements that were good I'm not gonna lie the fact that it was just noises that was freaking everybody out was getting old like at first I thought like, okay it's be suspended no it really was like hold on it's like yeah, they're not attacking you. You're not being attacked by anybody. You're literally, it's just like someone's knocking on a door. And once you get past the fact that, yes, there's a ghost out there, right? all he's doing is knocking. And he's bending the wood a little bit. That's it. And I was just like, really? Like, we're freaking out about this? And then Eleanor kind of loses her mind, and she, you know, pfft. not just the bashest one like I did. Like, don't get me wrong, I, I didn't care for this movie that much either. But I liked it better than the crazies. So I won't just bash it completely. There were some good, actual suspenseful moments. There's a scene, and you can, you, you like, as, as the scene's progressing, you know what's going to happen. You already know what, what's going on, but it's still a decent scene where the two girls have to sleep together. And not like in a lesbian, awesome, Cinemax, uh, Emmanuel in space kind of way. No, like, you know, their beds are side by side. Somehow she winds up over on the sofa, but you don't see that first. First you think you probably, she's probably just in her bed. And of course, it's all in her head. She's like, oh, they're coming to get me. It's all, it's all about her, right? That's what you want. She wants to be the center of attention the entire fucking movie. Anyway, she's like, oh, no, you know, but I, I'll, I'll tell them to stop. And, you know, anyways, but she thinks she's holding on to the other girl's hand. And right there, you know she's not. But she's just like, my gosh, she's, she's really giving me a death, death grip. She's squeezing my hand really hard. 
oh my god, she must be Albert. And then when like the camera pans out, she does scream out. She's on the love seat, like next to the wall. I don't know how she got over there. And then of course the girl she's you know, supposed to be next to in bed is way over there, and you're she's holding nothing. She's like, oh my god. Okay, there's a professor. Like, I remember he was played by Liam Neeson in the remake. I don't know any of the people who played this movie at all. Anyway, the professor in this movie he has a wife, and she shows up at the end. And this is really like, I'm gonna go like the whole movie. I mean, it has some moments. Like, there's a scene where like uh, Eleanor's outside, and she's just doing this more internal mo monologue. And when she looks up at the window, the camera just it comes like you know the camera angles from the like the window's point of view, I guess, and it zooms in quick on her. Kind of a little like, effective moment. Like I didn't personally jump. But I was just like, that's kind of cool, you know? Like, you know, if the whole movie was actually more suspenseful, that would have been a pretty shocking moment. So, I, I dug that, but, you know, once again, get back to, you know, the dude's wife shows up, and she's skeptical of shit. She goes missing from the house. Anyway, so they're looking for her, and there's a scene where Eleanor climbs this, like, rickety spiral staircase, and anyway, at the top, when they when the guy goes up and finally gets her, and they're going, they're about to go back down, she looks up, and there's a quick scene of the, of the woman the, his wife, I'd like, open up this hatch to the attic, and, and of course she looks horrible, like she's not even like that elegant, beautiful woman that came in, she's literally just like haggard and everything, and it's a pretty good scene, and once again, I didn't jump to the rest of the movie shit, if I would have actually been invested into this film, or it would have actually been kind of, you know, creepy along the way, I probably would have jumped, it was you know, like the scene in uh, House on Haunted Hill, the original, with that old woman just standing there, that's a scary fucking scene, and you're on the edge of your seat for the rest of the movie. I don't care who you are, or I was. I was like, holy shit. This movie didn't have any of that, but it has some decent moments. Uh, and then, of course, the last scene I will say that actually had decent moments at the end. Like, the woman's, like, Eleanor gets in her car, and she's driving away. Still is upset. She's like, oh, the house picked the other girl, not me. I'm upset. I'm pouting, blah, blah, blah. And then you see, last second, because the car's going out of control because the house is taking control of the car, presumably. The car barely hit the... Uh, you know, tree, you see like this woman in white run across the thing. And I'm like, holy shit, is, we finally see a ghost? Like, is this a ghost? And it turns out it's still the professor's wife or doctor's wife or whatever he is. Uh, you know, and of course, it's explained that, like, you know, I guess, like, the house control on her, too. And I don't know. Anyways, uh, here's my conclusion. Like, here's why I have come up with after all this. Uh, it was written by Shirley Jackson. Uh, she wrote, uh, and the story is called uh, Legend of Hell House. Hill House, sorry, Hill House. Uh, and then uh, she also wrote The Lottery. Now, I've never read a single work of Shirley Jackson. However, in this movie, if you think about the book, it's just this dumpy girl just crying the entire fucking movie. Just crying, pouting, whining. Typically just being a chick. And then... On the lottery, it's about this girl, and I've never read the lottery, but I know like why. I know the twist at the end. Uh, presumably, she's probably whining the entire fucking thing. Even though she won the lottery, she's probably whining about how you know life is not fair. But she finally got the lottery. But then, of course, the you know the lottery is actually she's gonna be stoned to death, and she's still whining. Like you know, I'm assuming she's whining the rest of the books. So I really like Shirley Jackson. Probably just writes a lot of whiny fucking teenage girl bullshit. She's probably like the Stephanie Meyer of like the day. Now I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, oh, please correct me because I'm sure I need correcting on this. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's usually just from the point of view of a girl and she's just crying the whole fucking book. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so neither one of them I really care for, but as I always say, you know, I never steer you guys away from it. I think you should see any movie and every movie so you can form your own opinion. Uh, just for me personally, I didn't care for either one of these guys. So yes. Uh, that's it. I'm out of here, and uh, yeah, it's time to shed this shit and I don't know, get an ice bath or I don't know. I got nothing. I, I I'm having trouble with an outro. Like I don't know. I have I have an intro usually down pad because you just introduce the show. It's like I do. Outro. I don't know. I just feel like I can't just be like see you later and then go. I don't know. I'll work on it. All right. Catch you guys later.